I'm just going to set this up now. I'm setting up a very simple document. So I'm in InDesign. So this is a new file. And boringly, it will be yes, another three column A4 landscape, uh, portrait page. So it's actually remembered those from last time. So there's my margins. I'm actually going to make the margins a little bit bigger, actually, um, as they would be. So we'll put quite a bit at the top. 25. Um, if you're doing it, you can make this up as you go along, which is basically what I'm doing now anyway. So we make that 15. Create. Wait while it does its stuff. If you're wondering why your computer does it so quickly and mine takes forever. Um, there is a reason for that. Okay. Um, <laughs> which doesn't help you very much. So there's a reason for that in that it keeps on phoning home to Adobe. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in on the top of this. Actually, no, I'll just leave it where it is for the moment. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna bring in the text. So come over here to File and Place, and it's gonna cue me for the text. So it's in here, so I'll show leaflet. So there's my copy, click on Open. Now I haven't bothered about any import options on this because I'm going to make loads of change. So just bring it in as plain text to do absolutely fine. Now what you can't see is I am holding down the shift key. Because when I hold down the shift key, let's have a look on my monitor. Yeah, you should be able to see that. Hello. That's interesting. It's not showing. Oh, it is now. So I don't know if you notice that on the cursor, it looks like a little snake from that where it's just normal. Um, and it's being quite sluggish at the moment. So I'm going to place that. So by holding down the shift key and pointing at that first column and clicking once, it's now threaded that text through the entire document. In this case, uh, five and a half columns worth. That's going to change. What I'm now going to do is I am going to zoom in just on a few top columns there so you can see what's going on. There we go. So here's my text, and for the purposes of this discussion, we will assume that we don't want it to look like this because that's pretty boring. And as you saw from the final piece, we need this to be sort of moderately wacky. And um, so what I'm going to do is style it. Now, there's a couple of things I can lose straight away. Um, I actually don't need any text tool back. I don't need that bit at the top there, so I'm just going to delete that. And there we go. Uh, the other thing, which if you look at this text, um, which is something I've actually forgotten, but never mind, it's fixable. Um, You'll notice that, um, for example, just here, there's some weird characters in there. There's a couple more over there. So what we would have to do is look at the original and see what those are. What's happened there is that this has been done on a PC, and it's been done on an old PC, um, old then and old now. and the PC has got a much smaller character set than the Mac has. And so when the Mac maps the numbers that represent the characters onto its characters, it gets it makes some mistakes. We can fix that sometimes on import. Uh, normally, I don't bother. Um, it's not, just in case you're concerned, it's not much of a problem nowadays. Um, this is seven years old, and it was a much bigger problem then. So I've got my piece of text, and I am going to show you how to set up a style. Now, under the styles, we have cell styles. Those are for tables. I'm not going to be showing those at all. Might do a thing on tables in a few weeks' time. Might not. Uh, character styles, and I'll show you one of those. And then we have object styles. Objects are things like boxes and frames. 
I get time, I'll show you one of those, but maybe um, if we're running out of time, which it looks like we will do, um, I'll show you that another week. And then paragraph styles, which is where I want to start. So I'm going to bring up the paragraph styles, and here they are. And I'll just place it up there. I'm dragging the bottom down a little bit. Um, so at the moment, um, highlighted and in square brackets, we have a basic paragraph. That is a paragraph that doesn't do anything other than be very ordinary. So I want to set a style for a heading. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to click on new style. And I am going to select. And you don't need to select it by going like that. Um, all you need to do is just put the cursor in that particular uh, paragraph. And I'm going to apply that style. And with a bit of luck, absolutely nothing will happen. There it goes. Nothing happened. So now I'm going to edit this style and I want you to watch what happens because this is what makes it magic for me anyway. So there's my um, style. So it's first of all, give it a name. So I'll call it uh, show. It's good as anything. And it's not based on anything. I'll come back to that if somebody's interested another day. And I need to choose a font. That's the font it is at the moment. I'm going to choose something. Oh, I'm also going to click preview down the bottom. So choose the font. And uh, now what should we have? Obviously, what does that look like? Ooh, it's very thin, isn't it? Okay, we'll live with it for the moment. Uh, I'll increase the size. The reason this might be a good font for listings, of course, is you can do it pretty big. And it doesn't go to two lines. So um, that looks fine. Leading, I'll leave it where it is. And she'll make it a bit smaller. Just in case it does want to go to two lines. Um, advanced character formats, I ignore that. You can scale it. Index and spacing. I'm going to put some space before, and you will see why. So paste before can be... Let's say three millimeters space after could be one millimeter. Did you see how that moves down? Um, tabs we ignore. I mean, you can play with all of these. I mean, paragraph rules, you can put a rule underneath it if you want. Hey, that could be fun, couldn't it? You can even shade it, which is quite clever. So if I click on shading, it does that. And so that's a black, apparently, but it's 20%. So let's make it 100%. Now you're saying, why is he doing that? Because you can't read it. Well, if you've kept up, we can come down here, change the character color. And now we have that text white out of black on a little bar. Of course, you can go back to the shading and you can change the color of the bar if you want. Let's have a red one. And let's assume we're happy with that. OK, I'm going to click on OK. And then just to test it works, I'm going to click on there, click on show, and there it goes. We have a problem. It's gone to two lines. That's all right. We can fix that in a second. Um, here's another heading. So once again, if I click on that, you can see that I'm now formatting things really quickly. I'm going to do a few more. So... Um, one of the things I'm going to do here to demonstrate is just to switch on. And we've done this before, switch on the hidden characters. Because um, I want to get rid of returns like that one there. And that one there. Because I'm going to control all of that spacing through the spiral sheet. And there, do you remember I put five millimeters or four? There you can see that working. That one there isn't working so well. We need to go back and edit that. OK, so I'm going to do two more styles and then call it a day. I think you've got to hang of it. Um, and as I say, I put the files up. If you, I'd like you to have a go. Um, don't bust a gut on it. Spend half an hour, see how it works. Uh, then get on with FMP. But let me just do one more. So here I am going to click on that. Um, I'm going to put the cursor in there. And 
Now you notice that I've clicked on there and it's picked up a style I don't want. That's fine. We're going to edit this. So this will be show copy. Let's call it that. And that says it's based on show, which is why it's done that. So I'm going to say now just base it on the basic paragraph. So it's gone back to where it was. So you see how it's updating itself. This is a really powerful tool you can use here. So basic character formats, it's on Minion. Uh, let's have it on Myriad. I think we we'll use that for a lot of things. And we'll make that a little bit smaller. Um, Leading, we we'll make a bit bigger, put a bit of air in it. It's always a good idea. Um, what else do we want to do with this? Probably not a lot, to be honest. Um, I think that will do. I'm going to click on OK. Now, I need to put that on there. So these are now picking up the style that I set. Whoops, wrong one. Doesn't matter. We can change it back. So at this point, we realize that although we quite like that big red, white out red text at the top, it's really big and it's a bit sort of in your face. So here's the big deal. I'm going to just click in there just simply so I don't change anything. And I'm going to go back to this style sheet. And I'm going to change it again. So that's 34. Now I'm going to move this out of the way um, because that was one of my problem areas. So I'm going to shrink it down a bit. Now, I had no idea what obviously looked like when I called it up. Um, which is not to crack a joke. I'm just trying to see something. We... Oh, good old rubber rusty. Okay, so this is rubber gr grotesque. This uh, one they use in Harry Potter's films. Um, so, you know. So, once again, I am going to shrink that down so it fits on one line. Oh, incidentally, you may have noticed, um, let's make it a little bigger, it's hyphenating there. So, down here, you can get a hyphenation and just switch it off. There it goes. Uh, back to my character formats. So I'm going to go down to about 14. Not sure I'm going to, okay, most of those were on one line, so that's probably not too bad. Um, we can track it. Tracking pushes letters a bit closer together. So you can see that happening there. Um, I'd have to make it so I'm going to decide what to do there. And then leading, let's make that the same size. There you go. So I said I was going to do a couple more styles, but I think there I have demonstrated it. I'm just going to make that all show copy as well. There it goes. Um, I think I've demonstrated there the power of a style sheet. And if I'm doing a publication for the first time, um, then I'm going to spend some time setting the styles. So, um, for example, um, how many styles can you have? Well, you can have as many as you want. Um, if I just come over here now, I'm just going to call up this. So this is the um, magazine that I uh, laid out as a job. A couple of, um, as I say, mainly I did this a couple of weeks ago just to prove it's me. If you can read the small print, you'll see I'm down there somewhere. There I am, just there. Um, and this uses a number of tricks you can do with style sheets. So here's the um, pages laid out with styles, with text wraps. Um, we covered those. Just want to show you how some of these are used for a real job. Um, scroll, 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 scroll. No, we had a quite a big cutout, I thought. Maybe I'm getting confused. Is that a cutout? Yeah, there you go. So there's a there's there's a cutout. Um, just in case you're saying, yeah, that it looks ugly, that page. I absolutely agree with you. 
it's not a pretty page. Um, anybody's interested, though, no doubt I'm breaking my own copyright. I can send you a free. Co I can send you a copy to have a look at, uh, or you can subscribe. It's um, it's six dollars an issue. Uh, you're paying dollars. I get paid in New Zealand, whatever's. But there you can see it, and all of these are style sheets. And the one thing I haven't shown you, well, I'm just a couple of things I'm showing you, and I will come back to those um, in a subsequent week. I haven't shown you how to do an object style. So by using an object style, I can um, get a picture. I can tell the uh, the object style tells the picture that it's got to have a uh, one point black border. It's got to have a white background and the picture should be sized to fit the box that has been drawn which doesn't always work, but is a very quick way of getting it to start. And in this one, the links don't work, but just one other thing, if you're really interested or if you want to do this professionally, um, and it's a trick that not a lot of people know, um, what you can do here is um, link the styles to the index or the list of contents and then get it to generate the contents automatically for you. And I think that's a really neat, um, thing that InDesign does and what makes it even better than that is that if I then publish this as EPUB or publish to the web and then all those links are lives and we can include videos so um, you know it's it's great fun okay I'm going to stop there I think I have gone on quite enough so let me just uh, stop sharing Come back to you all. Okay, so that was the piece I wanted to show you. I'm just going to stop that recording and then, yeah.